Hi and welcome to the Student Ramble. I'm Phoebe and today I'm joined with Leah. Hello. And we're going to be talking about um, accommodation at uni and kind of our experience of it and what we can kind of tell you about what we've learnt through our couple years of experiencing student housing. Yeah, we've had like a nice mixture. I think we've had similar experiences, but also we we kind of took different pathways, which I think will be yeah. quite interesting to delve into. Yeah, and we met in accommodation. Yeah, so we we didn't know each other before uni, so we were just we it was purely by chance that we were thrown into the same um, accommodation, and mm. yeah, the the friendship blossomed from there. <laughs> And now we're here. Yeah, somehow we're here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it'd probably be a nice um, thing to start with if we talk about the types of accommodation that our university offers, because I feel like it's probably very similar to a lot of other universities out there. Yeah, I mean, did you so, know what kind of um, accommodation that you wanted when you are applying? Because obviously there was ensuite. suite... Um, night shared bathroom did you know what kind of one that you wanted or was it just kind of looking at prices more than anything i personally i know i wanted an ensuite bathroom i wanted my own bathroom Mm. um so i have a condition called fibromyalgia and a part of that is i have kind of some tummy upset problems and i feel quite queasy a lot of the time so when i do feel like that i like being in the bathroom just to kind of I know, when you feel not very well, you'd prefer to be in the bathroom, you know? Yeah. Um, I didn't want to be, you know, clogging up everyone else's day because I'm, like, camped out in the bathroom because I don't feel very well. Yeah, especially with, like, older blocks, there's um, the shared bathrooms you'll have. So people I know that were in shared bathroom um, in first year, it was, like, 12 people sharing two bathrooms, which you think is, you know, oh, my God, that's awful, but... You're never in there at the same time, and if you are, you know, there is another bathroom there. Like everyone's on different body clocks. Mm. But no, I was the yeah. same. I wanted an ensuite purely based on the fact that I was like, I don't know the people that I'm moving in with. I don't know what kind of mess they're going to create. So I just liked the idea of an ensuite just for my own personal peace of mind. Yeah, and I guess a lot of people, like, we were quite fortunate in that we could afford having a slightly more expensive um accommodation option because en suites are more expensive than a shared bathroom but mm. the luck of having that choice i feel like a lot of people would end up choosing a personal bathroom at least in their first year yeah i mean on the i think when i applied um so when you look for accommodation I and mean, you you have to like do a ranking of the your priority like your top priority and then you kind of do a hierarchy of the accommodations that you want which you get to see through Mm -hmm. the open days um so yeah i think i put the accommodation we were in i put that at the top of my list not thinking i would get it um Mm. and i was lucky that i got it i think that was because of how early i applied whereas my friend i had a couple of friends who did basically the same application as me and they didn't even get anything on their list they got thrown into the complete opposite and the issue mm. is if you you get an offer for your accommodation and you pretty much have to accept it because if you don't then you don't get another offer um yeah it's kind of like um it's called an offer but it's like this is the room you can have take it or leave it kind of thing yeah exactly but i mean it, it it you know we were very lucky with um the accommodation that we had and to us and the people that we were living with as well I think mm, we've had yeah. we've heard horror stories from like our friends of you know people who just like it was just a messy like messy in the kitchen all the time you know it was a horror story of like parties constantly and it was just we were quite lucky because although every now and again there would be like a bit of noise it wasn't it was nowhere near as bad as other people had it yeah definitely but I think that's the, um, the halls we were in were very small in comparison to other halls yeah so typically university like student blocks probably have what 12 to 16 flats maybe on the smaller side up to and that's like per floor yeah well flats i mean not rooms 
Yeah, yeah. So, but our kind of um, first year, we had, what, eight flats in our block? Yeah. So there was like 64 people. Yeah, which it was, was a quite small block. for uni accommodation. Um, yeah, so we, we were, were quite also lucky with that. in quieter living. So it, it yeah. didn't need to be a massive block. Yeah, so quieter living on that topic. Um, we should probably explain what that is because I don't think mm. all universities offer that. So uh, while we study, you can um, choose to be in something called quieter living, which means everyone is kind of expected to keep the noise level at a minimum at all times um obviously they're not expecting you to be silent all day every day but it's kind of like Just everyone here yeah, yeah it's for kind of older students or people who like peace and quiet um and a lot of like of final curfew. years a lot yeah. of final years went into those um and there's also um curfew's the wrong word no, it was but, a bit um, like it was a bit like um it was like a noise curfew where, you know, you had to yeah like every you couldn't really make you couldn't be playing music on your speakers after was it like eleven till six, so yeah eleven p.m. till six a.m. It was yeah. kind of like you can be quiet in your own flat, but if you can hear it from another flat, people are gonna have some complaints. And that's not hard in uni flats as well because, I mean, the walls are quite thin yeah i mean i was <laughs> my room was so i was opposite millie um and i was right next to the front door and i was also right next to the stairwell um oh god <laughs> i the amount of like noise that i would hear on a night where people would be coming back from a night out or whatever was so funny and the amount of, i think i remember i was <laughs> laying in bed it was like two in the morning um and i could just hear it was one of the other flats it wasn't anyone in ours but one of the other flats were just playing Shakira really loudly. <laughs> and I wasn't too bothered because I was awake anyway, but I was just so confused. I was like, who's playing Shakira at 2am on a Tuesday? That is something else. <laughs> Shakira. Shakira of all things. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, you like you can't expect Falls to be perfect as much as, you know, on paper it would yeah. be the ideal, ideal scenario because you don't know who you're going to be moving in with and you can't control that and you're not really in halls that i mean granted this year has been a bit of an exception you know you're not really at your place most of the time anyway yeah i was gonna say usually for me so i had a very busy kind of schedule i had you know 22 24 contact hours a week so i'd kind of leave in the morning at like 8 30 and come back at like 5 5 30 maybe even 6 p.m so mm. I'd be out most of the day, so I wouldn't really notice um, yeah. if it was noisy. Obviously, this year, it's very different, um, but I don't think... Yeah, you've been in halls during this whole thing. Well, not this whole thing, but, you know, you went back into yeah. halls. Yes, I did. Uh, a different halls to last year. What was the difference, like, going back into halls compared to just starting fresh? So the difference of going back into halls is you kind of choose a group you can move in with. So um, you could choose, okay, if you had like four people who you were friends with and all of you kind of went, we don't really want to go into private housing, we want to stay in halls, but we want to stay together. You could elect to reapply for halls as a group. Um, reapply is the same process as the first year, you're just applying as a group to even group code that you put in so you're all linked together um oh, do you think like if you were also... in, if you were sorry if you were both like okay. so if you had a friend um that you knew before going to uni you were going to the same uni you wanted the same um halls do you think you could apply as a group bef- like into going into first year then no you ca- i don't think you can because you have a group code so in our well for our university at least when you're applying as a returner so i would be when i applied from going from first year to second year we were called returners um that's when that kind of apply as a group window opened on the accommodation portal which oh, wasn't right. there when we applied for first year and then you kind of when you go into that portal you put in your little like code I can't even remember what our code was because you could literally like name it anything. 
Um, well, that, that's just a recipe for trouble, isn't it? If you can, like, name your code yeah. whatever you want. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, and then they are more likely to put returners with returners. So, in oh, our okay. flat, there's, we have a flat of six. So, three of us moved in together. And then a group of two final years moved in together. And we had one empty room. So, that's my flat this year. Yeah. Whereas, obviously, like, for me, I kind of you know you made your friends in first year and then i moved into private housing mm. just purely because so it's was... cheaper yeah so what was kind of your experience with going through so did you end up going through um like an estate agents and going through that way or was it all online or how was your kind of process for that so i mean the first thing that you have to do is decide who you're living with because you know it's just easier to work out how many rooms you need and for example, for the people that I live with now, you know, we've got a couple of people who are mainly based on a different campus. Like our campus is split in two. There's like, and they're further away from each other. So you kind of have to work out, like try and get your criteria together before you start looking. Um, so mm-hmm. we knew that we needed so, like, and something in the area, which was a decent commute for both sides of the campus. Something which was, you know, we all agreed the average price that we wanted to pay um you know we said okay there's six of us living here so ideally we would like two bathrooms um and just just little things like that you know you've got to figure out what you want before you look because otherwise you're kind of going to waste your time um so i mean i mainly did the the house hunting um so we started looking in I think it was like actually looking in November of first year. So, you know, we'd we basically just moved in, just made friends, and then we just started looking, which you don't mm. have to do it that early. It's just we were just wanting to get it done. Um, like, there's houses all the way up until, like, May. So don't, like, you yeah. don't have to do it that early. Yeah, um, I mean, it is advisable to do it that early because you're more likely to get, like, quote-unquote good properties. But to be honest, not necessarily, because I mean, I found, I've spoken to people who found their house in like the end of April and they've still got decent houses, you know, they just pop up at different times. So like, it's not, like you will find something. Um, It's just, I think if you're looking to go in with a bigger group, it's probably easier because you're more likely to get a bigger house. So Mm -hmm. I, what did I look on? I think I looked on things like Zoopla, um... There were also like local estate agencies around the area that I just would have a look on. They would advertise them as student housing. Or to be fair, mm-hmm. like you don't have to go through estate agents. Um, it's just I found it just easier. Um, also, I like the university held an accommodation talk where they basically gave a list of people who were good to use, and they did a little checklist of you know when you're looking at houses this is the things you need to kind of be wary of you know when you're looking through contracts different things to watch out for because you know it's the sort of thing where you've got to be careful because you could end up being stuck in a house that you don't like and you've got no way to kind of negotiate any issues so yeah basically we booked a couple of house viewings um yeah booked a couple of house viewings we went and saw them like we went as a group and i really recommend going as a group because you know one person can't decide for the entire group it's not fair and if you're all living there you've all got to like it Mm. um so yeah we went along and even you'll know when you like when you get to the place i i'd recommend if so if you know that you're going to be walking to campus walk to the house because then you'll actually get a feel for what it will be like. Yeah. There's no point driving to house viewing if you're not going to be driving to campus. So yeah. yeah, we we got to the we met the estate agent outside. I asked a few questions, you know, just typical things like always ask them what's the average price for bills that you know normally gets paid. Um, also, a lot of the time the old, the tenants that are normally there they'll be there. If you can try yeah. and talk to them away from this estate agent, that's really handy. Or we were lucky that we were able to get um, like the Facebook messenger of one of the people who lived in the current house that we're at now. Mm. Um, and, you know, they told us things which the estate agents, the estate agents are there to kind of just take your money. Yeah, so, yeah as like, bad as it to... sounds, that's her job. <laughs> 
yeah exactly and you know if i was in the position i'd do the same but you kind of want to you want to know what you're getting yourself into because for yeah. example we there were some appliances when we got here that weren't fully working so we needed to get those replaced and yeah we wouldn't have been told if we hadn't asked um mm. but we we've been very lucky with the agents that we're with just purely because a lot of um estate agents go through a landlord yeah and you know there's the typical stigma of uh landlords being really useless especially for uni students and i mean we've been very lucky that we've not had that but i know it's a very real problem for a lot of students so i think try if you can try and almost get a feel for who your landlord is before you sign anything that's really handy but also just recognize that they're they are putting on a front when they're being nice to you like they might be really nice but they're there to take your money (laughs) Yeah, I guess that's a big thing with any kind of accommodation provider. Like, it doesn't matter if it's a private landlord or, like, a big company. You need to kind of speak to people who have experienced living um, in accommodations from that provider. Yeah. Um, Yeah, don't undervalue other people's experiences. Even if you're like, that will never happen to me. You're like, I'll never have that experience, I'll be fine respect yeah and don't be af- don't be afraid to go for like multiple viewings like, yeah for example for multiple viewings talk to lots of people yeah you know because of at the time we were all in physical lectures the only time that we could go view houses was like in the evening or like at night and you know we were looking mm. in winter so it was like five o'clock and it was pitch black outside and it's completely different um looking at a house in the dark compared to you know natural light like for example you know Mm. we uh came to the house looked around liked it the price was good it was in a good great area so we're like let's just get it signed get it done and whatever looking back i wish we'd looked at it in the light i don't think it would have made much of a difference just because the location just it, it sold it for us because it was just it was in the perfect spot Mm. i mean probably a benefit that you also had was you know being able to talk to the current tenant and asking them questions which is you know the point i was trying to get to with you know listen to other people with experience of a landlord or of um, a particular company or a provider you know because i know in first year we had a rather large problem where we were ended up having to leave the flat at you know overnight oh almost oh my god yeah that was a whole experience um but we were really lucky that our accommodation provider were really good you know incredibly helpful but yeah, i feel like I, if we were with a different provider with the company is uh, endorsed by the uni, the uni as well yeah but i i sometimes wonder like if we were with a different company because i know some companies aren't as good mm. you know that would have been so much worse I mean, I think based on what happened that night, like, basically, there was, like, a... I can't remember what it was. Was it just, like, there was a leak onto, like, some electricals or something? Yeah, um, so... And basically, basically they had to evacuate happened. the building at 10pm. And then we were like, oh, they, we thought it was going to be a couple of hours. And then it ended up being... <laughs> and, and luckily, I was able to say, look, we'll go to my friends. Uh, so we were like... Basically, they said, grab stuff for the night, just in case you can't come back tonight. So we like go in, grab like <laughs> we're like grabbing laptops. We're just like, okay, are we gonna be able to come back to the rooms? Who knows? I've got a lecture at nine a.m. This is fine. Um, and it was I just an remember, yeah, it was so it was you, Millie, and I. Uh, Lara yeah. wasn't there that weekend, and we just trekked across campus. We're like we're home for the night. Yeah. Um, and then I remember I was just checking my email. I was getting so angry. I was just like, because I was grumpy. I was like tired. I was just like, I want to go back to bed. I think it was probably like 11 p.m. And we were yeah. all like in our pajamas, like half asleep still, you know, trekking across campus to go stay in someone else's room for the night. Yeah. And, you know, luck, like, I just started doing work. It was like one in the morning and I was just doing my work because I was like, what else can I do? I've got so much adrenaline. <laughs> I, and remember- I think, was it like... <laughs> Was it like two, two in the morning that we got the email saying like you can come back now? Because I think everyone was just bombarding them with phone calls because they gave it like a helpline. 
it was 2.35 a.m. And I remember that very distinctly. Yeah, and then oh, I just, I remember, like, getting back into the flat and I was just, like... Like, I just <laughs> saw, like, my rucksack that had, like, my clothes and my laptop and I was just, like... I don't care. So I just literally crashed, and then I just t- I took my bag to my la- uh, my lecture the next day with all my clothes still in it. <laughs> I just couldn't my... be bothered. <laughs> my lasting memory of that night was listening to the Venga Boys <laughs> at like <sighs> midnight. I don't remember that. <laughs> we, had, we had the Venga Boys on just because we were like so. We rang our parents like laughing our asses off mainly Mm. because if we didn't laugh about it we would have probably ended up having a group cry i think to be honest like to find it wasn't i i don't i think it wasn't it wasn't scary to me i don't really care i was just it was more of like just a mild inconvenience i was just like i can't be bothered just get it sorted and tell me when i can go to bed (laughs) it was more like frustration because it was like a sunday night yeah and like we all had lectures in the morning on monday and we and weren't so being told what be... was going on as well because obviously they didn't know what was going on so they couldn't feed it back to us um, yeah. and we got in this, was like, this phone a... number saying you know just just ring this for questions or whatever so like I'd turn into like proper mum mode and I was like right I'm just going to keep I'm just going to call them and just see what's going on <laughs> and they were like I, I think yeah let me talk to our super and they were saying at one point that they didn't know if it was going to be fixable so they didn't know if they were going to have to just relocate all of us into different halls yeah. And I was just like, no, I ain't moving. <laughs> Not happening. I remember you would ring them like on the hour, every hour, until you got yeah. an answer. Yeah, I wanted to, to be fair, I was like, because it, I think if it had gotten to like, uh, to be fair, I probably would have just done an all nighter, but I was getting to the point where I was like, maybe we should just go to sleep and we'll sort this tomorrow. But I was so fueled on adrenaline. I was like, no, nah, sh- I just want an answer. I just like, no, like, I want an remember? answer. Can I go back tonight or are you sorting this tomorrow? Do you remember? It was our... <laughs> so next to one of the student villages is like a Greg's. And so <laughs> I remember we ended up Googling when that was going to open. And oh, we were just yeah. like, okay, we're going to pull an all-nighter and just go there for breakfast in the morning. Yeah, we'll, that we'll was stay like awake with our Greg's. Plan. Yeah, that was like our plan. Yeah. But we ended up getting back to the flat at probably like 3 or 4 a.m. Yeah, that was like... I mean, to be fair, this is what I think is nice about halls because it's very... You're still very protected. Like, you're still in a little bubble. You know, if anything goes wrong, you can just ring the the hotline and just a maintenance person will come out and they'll fix it then and there. Or, you know, if you're having bother with noise, security will come and sort it. Whereas, you know, private accommodation, yeah. like considering the current climate um there's still been like to be fair there's not been that much noise but there's been like a few nights like for example i um had like a migraine the other day and i was like trying to have a nap and then this like car alarm kept going off and it was like that's rough it's just like little things like that or like for example oh no sorry it wasn't a car alarm it was like someone like obviously just beeping their horn to like get the attention of their mate but they just kept doing it for like 25 minutes and it was just oh so frustrating but you know i think private housing is nice because it's a separation from uni like you feel like you're more of an adult because you're like this is my house and i can clean it and i can do this and whatever whereas you know accommodation we had a cleaner come in and like you know they would do the bins and they would clean the sides or whatever yeah like i don't think i picked up a hoover more than once when we were living in the flats. Really? That's crazy. Yeah, I like... I mean, to be fair, I think I hoovered my room, like, twice. Which is really <laughs> grim. Ho- like, hoover your room more than that, I just... I really couldn't be bothered. I was like, the room... The floor doesn't... <laughs> is not visibly dirty, so... <laughs> we lived there for six months, Lee, and you didn't hoover <laughs> twice. Yeah, I That's mean, to be disgusting. fair... disgusting. It's fine. I look, I clean the bathroom and I clean the sides. That's all that mattered. But no, it's... <laughs> you spilled- you spilt stuff all over that floor and you only no 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 no. you're making it sound like i made a massive mess i did not i spilled one drink once which i cleaned up properly um and it just so (laughs) happened that my room smelled of caramel for the next two months (laughs) it was like this caramel whiskey or whatever it was i can't remember it was like amaretto but caramel and it It was like so strong i tell you what there was there's worse things that my room could have smelled of rather than caramel 
That's very true. I remember I cleaned your room once because you just couldn't face it. Oh, uh, yeah, I was like, I was very um, fragile that day. And I remember you, like, I think you and Millie just came into my room. You were like, you okay? I was like, no, not really. And you're like, you're like right, let's put on some music. So you put on the, all our 80s playlists on Spotify. And you just helped me clean my room. And you were like, right, where do I put this? Like, you went proper mum mode. Yeah, you and Millie had a dance and I cleaned. Yeah. Considering how, like, you know what's really funny? The, the, the flats, in comparison to, like, my bedroom now, for example, the flats were so much smaller. And they were so much messier. Yeah, like you'd think considering oh. I've got more space, like it would be more messy because you know you've got corners to dump stuff in, but no, it's cleaner. Yeah, those any to be fair, any accommodation is the rooms are incredibly small. Yeah, like and there's there's no way around it because they're trying to pack a lot of people into a very small space. I mean, also we had. I mean, to be fair, we had like an ensuite taking up most of the room, um, like a corner of the room. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so we had the single beds in the flat, so you could you could get like normal rooms, like standard rooms, or you could get premium, and premium just meant you had like a small double bed in there. Yeah. Um, which I I don't think it actually made much difference to the size of the room. Obviously, like you know, it's a bit bigger to fit the bed in there, but you you've got pretty much the same amount of floor space, and I don't I think I only know a couple of people who got double beds purely because that's just what they were given yeah which i feel i think this is really bad with the uni accommodations because for example if you applied for all of the cheaper accommodations because that's what you could afford and then you were Mm. just placed into a more expensive one if you didn't take that you then had to go and find your own accommodation which i think is so bad because it just it's just a bit unfair isn't it yeah it's it's rough being a student is rough and I feel like that's a side that a lot of people don't realise is like it's a lot of universities if you don't get the accommodation that you can afford there's some help but there's yeah. not a lot of help. I mean you can call like the um the application people or whatever and you can normally just say look I applied for these I didn't get them I got offered this one which I physically cannot afford Mm-hmm. Is there anything else or blah blah blah? Because there'll be some people who do drop out and then those rooms will open up. Because the way yeah. that it works is, for example, some people at the moment, because people can't live in their halls, you can give your contract to someone else. So if you join like the accommodation Facebook pages or whatever, there's normally someone saying, like, I've got a room in this accommodation, here's some pictures, here's the price. Because the only way you can get out of your contract is by finding someone else to fill it. Yeah. So it's this vicious vicious cycle of, you know, okay, I found a comedy, I found a contract that I want, but now I've got to find someone to take mine. Yeah. It's otherwise you're just paying two. There's a lot of like domino effects, but that's again like like the like real life housing situation where you have a chain of movers. Yeah. You know? Is there any part of you that like wishes that you went into private accommodation or do you think you're quite happy in halls again? I mean it's like swings and roundabouts, isn't it? Like, there's a lot of aspects I really like about living in student accommodation. Like, I like being close to the university, like, really close. Mm. And I like having that kind of extra security and extra maintenance, you know. Like, I'm a very handy person, but I don't want to have to, you know, ring a landlord at 3am because, like, the radiator's broken or something, you know. Mm. Whereas in accommodation, there's a hotline just for any kind of issues in halls which i don't feel bad ringing because someone's being paid to sit in a call center yeah you know but you know a part of me is like i wish i could have had that kind of experience of living in a house you know but i'm quite lucky in i've got i'm doing a placement year and then i've got my third year so i've got two years left of my university journey at least for my undergrad so i probably will end up living in a in the house at one point yeah i would i mean obviously you know if if it like you find out that halls is just something that you gel with better and you prefer it then you know there's no reason why someone shouldn't just stay in halls the whole time like it just because you know some people say oh you know but like living in a house with your friends is like part of the experience and to an extent it is but 
you can still do that just by living in halls. Yeah, I mean, I know people who have stayed in halls throughout their entire degree, but in second and third year, they've stayed with the same people. So they've moved as a group from one flat to another flat to another flat in halls. Yeah. And that's works really well for them. You know, you just need to find something that fits you and your friends and you know you don't have to stay with your friends if you make friends and they want to go in the house but you want to stay in halls you know it's okay not to go with them and say no I want to stay here and that's what I'm going to do you know which comes back to the whole like you're not being a real student if you don't do xyz you know that's like a load of crap honestly (laughs) you know you've got to do what feels right for you and if that's yeah, exactly. different from what everyone else is doing, then so be it. Yeah, my um, a friend that... Uh, so when we were looking for the house for next year, um, we were thinking of switching up the group, maybe getting more people in, and like, or just, you know, splitting or whatever. And mm. there was one of our friends um, who we wanted to live with them, but they just didn't want to live in a massive group. Um because yeah. if they joined there would be seven of us and they were like look I I really like you guys but I just I need my independence which you know that's fair enough as well you know you don't have just because your friends are all living in a house you don't have to live with them like if they're mm. actually good friends they'll they won't mind um so yeah like they've gone back into halls but we've already we've already said you know you're more than welcome to come around whenever you know we've got a spe- we'll have a spare room so you can just sleep over whenever you want mm but like for me, I I knew that I wanted to go into private accommodation because I've had people in my family and like other friends who had gone into private accommodation and they said that it was better because they felt that they had yeah. a bit more freedom. They weren't like paranoid. Like for example, in halls, the um, one of the rules was that you couldn't have stuff stuck up on your walls. Um, so I remember yeah. when, I can't remember when it was, there was like a couple of inspections and like, I remember when we found out about it, everyone was just, like, taking the stuff off of their walls or, like, making sure the blue tack hadn't stuck on the wall. And it's like, you know, at the house, you don't have to do that. You know, I'm... Our landlords are, like, pretty good, where they're just like, you know, if you want to do... Like, for example, they've said we can paint the walls as long as we ask them, like, about the (laughs) colour. Like, you know. Your landlord's pretty chill, though. They are. But also, you know, it... I mean, in terms of maintenance, I think a lot of landlords... Or even if you do it through, like, an agency, they have, like... So we have a website that we can go on to and then we just submit, like, a help ticket. And then that's when mm. they, like, come around to fix stuff. So it's, it is very similar to halls in that sense, at least with the company that I'm with. Um, it, yeah, it is so different for everyone. with our halls... Yeah. So with our halls, we have an app. Um, so our, all of our parcels go to um, the halls reception and you get kind of, like, a QR code and you have to go with your app to the reception and you also log any kind of maintenance queries you have through that app there's also like a hotline but usually if it's like my radiator doesn't work or if it's like the fridge light is gone (laughs) like you just put it on the app and then maintenance will come and fix it yeah i mean Um, don't which i guess is very different yeah don't be afraid to like um like you don't think oh well this is just a tiny problem i can probably fix it myself don't do that just call the like call for help because if yeah, you try and fix it and it. you break it then you're in trouble oh god yeah like don't like, do that <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure millie will be fine with me telling this story um but so this year um she, millie had a slight problem with her window like the um frame and the glass there was a slight gap so there was a lot of like cold air coming in this was back in like october Mm. um and she was her dad was going to bend it back in place and she was like no dad don't worry you know i'll just call maintenance a maintenance guy came (laughs) and he went to you know just bend the frame Mm. and he smashed her entire window oh my god what did it like properly like shatter like both panes cracks through all of it he had to tape it all back together god um i had to call the external glass company they had to recut the window oh it was a huge faff 
uh, they had to replace the entire, like, the biggest window. They had to replace all of it. Jesus. Um, but they did it for free because it wasn't Millie's fault. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing, like, you, you know, know, if Millie's dad had, like, tried to fix it and then it then it broken, they'd probably think that she'd done the damage. And yeah. then would have had to pay for it. Because, you know, you get fined, like, in halls, you pay a deposit. I mean, you pay a deposit for housing as well. So, basically, if you make a boo-boo, then... <laughs> then you're like in the mud basically i mean we got our deposits back you know even though i think i'd scratched the wall a couple of times like they kind of let you have like reasonable wear I yeah that's what they call it i think it's like for example you know if you've got a bike and the bike scratches the wall or whatever or you know there's like like for example if they can paint over it then it's fine or if it's you know if it's easily fixable and it's not too, uh, like it's not too much of a like a structural problem. Yeah, it's like if you like dented a shelf or like scuffed the wall, mm. you know you're living there usually for like nine months of the year. That's just so through general living. Some, yeah, they they expect some reasonable wear and tear. You know, Whereas, you know, if you if try to you've bend glass, the window. <laughs> yeah, if you've smashed the window, broke the sink, kind of thing, nicked a tap, you're probably not going to get your deposit back. Yeah, it's. I think that's what's quite nice about deposits because, like, to an extent, you feel kind of covered, but then also you're like, well, no, I want this money back. The best thing to do don't ex- Which don't expect you the... your deposit back. Because then if you do get it back, it's a nice surprise. It is. But, like, something my parents always said to me um, about... So, rent is expensive. Oh, Everyone yeah. knows this. Um, Sometimes so your maintenance loan doesn't even cover your rent. Oh, God. Don't get me started on that. <laughs> but, so, in your kind of baseline rent, that doesn't matter if you're with private accommodation or with you know, a university provided accommodation. In that rent is maintenance usually. Mm. So even if you can fix something yourself, don't. It's not your job. You are you've you're already paying money for someone else to do it for you. So don't yeah. waste that extra money you've had to spend. You know, when you're like, oh I don't want to bother them. Oh you know, bother that's, them. That that's what you're me. spending your money on. Do you remember when I had silverfish in my room, in, in my flat? Yes. So, yes. if you don't know, silverfish are basically <laughs> tiny, like, size of a fingernail, like... Oh, the... no, they can be chunky. Well, the, the ones that I had were quite small, and they basically, they come from, like, damp, which, you know, that's quite common with other rooms, and they were in the bottom of my wardrobe, because... I remember I remember this day like vividly. I was so stressed from doing the contracts for the house at the time. So I like I hadn't slept and I like I remember this very I hadn't well. eaten all day. I went Christmas shopping that day. I hadn't eaten. And then I got home. I uh, sorry, I'd bought stuff to make uh, I think it was like a lasagna for dinner. I was like the only thing that'll cheer me up is a lasagna. Um and I go into my wardrobe, to the bottom of my wardrobe, where I put all my like baking stuff that I don't very use very often. And there's silverfish in my lasagna dish. And that sends me. I start crying. I think I was on the phone to my friend. I was on the so phone to well. Amy at the time. I was like, Amy, I've got to go to the silverfish. And she thought I was joking because she was like, why is there this Minecraft fish or like Minecraft pest? in your wardrobe <laughs> she did, like my brother said the same thing they didn't realize that silverfish are a real thing like google it they're disgusting oh um gosh and i remember i was like talking to my mum and dad and i was like there's silverfish in my room and they're like well you can buy this stuff i was like i'm not buying anything like i'm gonna call the maintenance people and i remember they they had to like put traps down and then they i think they were gonna fumigate my room as well but it was quite lucky because i was going away for the weekend anyway it's so, like why should I have to deal with these little bugs if I can just yeah. get someone else to deal with it for me? So long story short, just get other people to do it. Yeah, like personally, I'm the type of person who will do everything myself, you know. My parents have found me doing some weird things in my room. Taking down a curtain pole, polyfilling old screw holes, 
paint oh my in God. pools. Once during lockdown 1.0, my mum found me. Um, I'd taken my chest of drawers outside and I was sanding it down with an electric sander because <laughs> I wanted to repaint it. Oh my God. You'd like fully turned will... into like 60 minute makeover. I really had. So I'm that kind of person who, if I can do it, I will. Mm. You know? So, but my parents said to me, look, Phoebe, you're already paying someone. Like, you're already paying for that service, so use it. Yeah, 100%. Like, you're already paying their wages. You may as well, like, give them a day's work. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I was going to say, with um, private accommodation, there are some things that I'd say are, like, things to definitely look out for. Because, you know, to in comparison, halls are pretty spick and span you know don't get me wrong a lot of the halls are run down like for example on campus we've got some really shiny new ones and then we've got some quite old you know old some prison of them buildings are limping. Yeah. yeah some of them are like concrete structures from the 80s yeah but for the <laughs> most part they're fine you know they've, they've they've been serviced and you know they, they do their job whereas private housing you yeah. know it's normally just been family homes which have been converted to hold 10 people or whatever um yeah so i mean there are so many things that i wish that i knew to look out for when i was looking for houses that i think going into the next house we already when we were looking for that next house um we were like okay well we know from the house that we're currently in that we don't like you know the the amount of mold that's in a lot of student houses so that was something that Mm. we had to look for because a lot so for example the house that we're in now is a converted family home and you know it's got fire doors and you know it's not meant for people to be sleeping eating you know all that sort of in the same room Mm. so you know we when it was dark and we were looking around when other people's stuff is in the rooms when you're looking around you don't notice it for example in my bedroom i didn't realize there was a lot of mold behind the bed between the bed and the um, window it was only until yeah. i like pulled the curtains when i moved in i was like oh my god um yeah <laughs> like it's it's not nice but um and that was something also to look into the contracts about because according to the contracts the mold is basically our thing that we have to deal with so yeah alas started my journey of you know scrubbing the wall with sponge uh, like a sponge soaked in diluted bleach which that's how you get mold off a wall by the way and then just let it like air out for a bit um top tip with leah top tip how to clean a moldy wall yeah or like i think it's like white vinegar also gets rid of it but the problem yeah. is a lot of so for example i've i've heard this from multiple people in student accommodations like sorry private accommodations um a lot of maintenance teams will just paint over mold rather than actually fixing oh. it oh that's not how that works. So this is the problem because I'd cleaned my wall and there was still mold under the paint. Oh, God. So don't expect your student house to be perfect. You know, it's not going to be the same yeah. as your family home. It's not going to be the same as your halls. At the end of the day, you know, if we weren't having to be locked inside most of the time, you are basically there to sleep and eat. Yeah. Let's be honest, most student accommodation is a bit rough around the edges yeah you know you, they're all well lived in they've seen some things <laughs> yes exactly but yeah i mean for me mm. private accommodation private accommodation was just so much cheaper because with halls you know the the rent you pay is a bundle you know you're getting maintenance in that you're getting water electricity gas you're getting so much for that price yeah and you're getting like a post service like we had a post room yeah. that would you know deal with any kind of deliveries that we would have constant security you know. <laughs> cleaner as well yeah you know you, you don't get to negotiate what you're paying for whereas you know student like private accommodation it's we had like to a look lump sum. yeah private accommodation we had to look for specific prices for gas and electricity and all that sort of stuff so we had control over what we needed um yeah you know, we don't pay for which a i guess is which i guess is the main benefit of going into private housing mm. is that like kind of quote unquote practice for real life you know yeah to having to shop around for bills to get the prices the best and blah blah blah, blah. 
Yeah. You know. But also, like, even just stupid things like learning how to do meter readings, I had no idea how to do that, whereas now I, I know what I'm doing. So, you know, that's just I, something... I knew how to do a meter reading. <laughs> no, this is the thing, like, you know, I I feel like before coming to uni, you're very active in the, the running of a household, whereas I wasn't really, like... I knew that my parents had to do it, but I just didn't know where it was. I didn't know how to do it. Oh, see, I'm just very much like as soon as someone's it's like oh my god i need to do this and i don't know how to do it i'm like can i come watch you do it so i know how to do it as well yeah which that's a good you know, thing i'm that person <laughs> which sometimes is quite annoying for everyone else around me but it's a very good way to learn things yeah so for us with the uh, utilities that we did in private accommodation we we actually went with a bundle uh package thing that is, it's catered mm. towards students, but we effectively each pay, um, so we pay around £50 a month for uh, gas, electricity, water, internet, and a TV licence. Um, so is that £50 for everyone or individually? That's £50 each. So basically okay. we individually pay that money to this company and we basically we pay for what they expect us to use at each point so you pay 50 pound per month each month for the year that you've agreed um Mm. and every month i submit the meter readings and on the account there's like a little graph so on that graph you have for example the amount of gas that you've paid for and how much they expect that you should have used at this point in the year and then there's another mm. line, which is how much you've actually used. So what you try to aim to do is use less than they've expected you to use, because then what they actually do is they give you back the money that you're owed at the end. Whereas if you go over that, yeah. then you pay it, you pay the difference. Mm. But it's pretty easy, you know. If you, as long as so we're in a very good practice of if we're not using plugs, we just turn them off, or you know, if it's warm, we turn the heating off because a lot of people just leave it on automatic. And when we first moved in, mm. it was on automatic the whole time. So the heating was on in summer and it didn't need to be. Oh God, that's horrendous. Yeah, and we were wondering why our gas bill was like, or like why our gas was so high in, in like September. Yeah. It's like, it's like 20 degrees outside. Mm. But yeah, I mean, we found, you know, in certain spots of the house, it's colder. So we need the heating on for those parts of the house, but not for others. So that's when you just get an electric radiator because it would cost more to do the heating for the whole house. It's hard to explain, but, you know, there's ways that you can get around it. But at the end of the day, don't try and save money in a way which makes you so unhappy. For example, we're not going to just try and save money by sitting in a freezing cold house. Yeah. You've got to find that kind of balance between kind of scrimping as a, any student does to try and save money but also keeping yourself happy because if you're not happy in like the environment you're living in which I think we've all learned this year if you're not happy in your environment that will affect everything else in your life Oh, definitely. so you need to find a good balance there something which I didn't realise how much was going to con- contribute to my how much I was going to enjoy the house was a garden like Mm. it's i mean oh. in halls i missed it i mean don't get me wrong the, the campus was effectively the garden so much. but you know it's nice for example yeah. when it's really warm i just like go and put my picnic blanket on the grass and then i'll just like lay down in the garden or you know we've got like a little picnic bench outside so we'll just sit out there whilst we're having a chat or drinking or whatever and it's just i don't yeah. know it's just nice and for example we can have people over and just sit in the garden and it's nice rather than being like okay we've got to tidy the house because someone's coming over i mean which you should do anyway you know that's just a courtesy thing but you know yeah you can basically just keep it outside which obviously at the moment is I mean, really valuable i was gonna say especially this year mm. if you have a garden that's been so so useful for everyone yeah like for example i've been able so well from i don't know what what the day is today but you know at the moment we can have six people oh you can like have people in your gardens 
which you know is really mm. nice because I've been able to say to like people that I haven't seen in a while oh you can come around we can just like sit in the garden and have a picnic or something and I think I forgot how nice that is because you know if I think mm. I feel really bad for the people who are in halls at the moment because you know especially first years because you've effectively been locked in from the fir- like from first uh, the beginning of the year and mm. whereas you know when we were in first year we were able to mix quite a lot you know you were able to go yeah. out and meet people and go and see other people's flats and you know learn that from other things you know even house viewings in the pandemic at the moment we've had all online oh my god yeah we had to film like a a house tour video um oh god (laughs) yeah just like that sounds horrendous i mean we got paid for it which was quite nice um oh that's all right yeah so like you basically just filmed (laughs) the house and be like okay this is where the meter box is this is the first bedroom this is the second one whatever and you know when people would come round we had to go and like stand in the garden or like basically just avoid them whilst <laughs> they were like looking around the house so we're all six of you just go like stand in the garden in a line just like kind of grimace at these people coming in we're like get out I want to come back inside it's cold <laughs> no That's it was it was fine to think and about. yeah we had a couple of people who came when they came round they asked us about the meter readings and when the people had gone around the, like the stage and had gone we were just like hey by the way use this company that's just who we've used but when mm. you're looking at other places look at this this and this because you yeah. know people will ask you you know how have how have, how's the landlord been or how's the agency been and they'll be honest with you they, they don't care about the sales they just you know it doesn't make a difference to us mm. we just know how especially if you're in you know if it's your first house you're going into we know how annoying it can be and how in the dark you are Which I think leaps back to listening to people's reviews of Mm. providers. Yeah, go on Google. Like, I dare say a lot of companies have, like, Google reviews or, you know, they've got people that you can access. But even, like, I think through the accommodation, there were, like, I think there was a lot of um, information floating around the uni at the time of, you know, don't use this estate agency, they did this, or... So everyone kind of collectively knew to avoid certain companies. Like, everyone has, like, a friend of a friend. That, like, didn't get their deposit you know. back. <laughs> yeah, and then everyone's like, oh, don't use those because I know someone that blah, blah, blah. Which is kind of, like, rumours. But, you know, it's oh, based Oh, take it with a pinch of salt, but, you know, there, there's loads of people. Like, there's bear loads it in of mind. people who will have been, um, like, for example, they wouldn't have gotten their deposit ba- deposits back and they'd probably think that it was unfairly. But then they've actually just smashed a load of stuff and, or, you know, just little yeah. things like that. But, but I don't know. You know, do look into those kind of university rumours because you, it might be based on something, even yeah. if it's just off of like one person ex- experience. You know. But to be honest, do I think take living it into with account. I think living with friends, like so, for example, moving from first year. First year is like make all the friends, like make as many friends as you can, join societies, you know, um, just talk to people. But if you can't find mm. anyone that you're like, I really want to live with you or whatever, people advertise for spare rooms all of the time. Um, oh, yeah. So, like, constantly. You don't have to be like, oh, I have to find people to live with. You don't have to do that. I just live somewhere. Yeah. Or even go back to halls if that's an option yeah. for you. Yeah, if you like, you know, if you get thrown, you don't have to apply as a group to go back into halls. You can just apply on your own. Yeah, you can still apply as a, a single. So yeah, I mean, I enjoy living with my friends because you know we'll mess around and it's nice, you know, waking up and going down to the kitchen and just there's a couple of people there and you just start talking at like two in the afternoon and be like, what are you having for breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> but hmm. I don't know. I think it's nice. I mean, I do. The only reason I'd say that I wish I would go back into halls is purely because I'm lazy and I liked the fact we had a cleaner (laughs) and the fact we were so close on campus. I mean, we were so close to, like, one of the bars on campus. So, like... Oh, it was, like, a two-second walk. Which was... I didn't take opportunity, like, take up that chance as much as I should have. No. But it's still nice. I mean... 
the location that we are that I'm in now you know we specifically chose it because it was still close to the uni so like our local pub mm. is still one of the uni ones is it still the same one yeah which oh. is really handy <laughs> <laughs> when everything opens up again yeah exactly you know it's just try and as a group get like the first thing first is like try and decide what sort of price range you're looking at but to be honest you need to be able to be flexible because for example the stuff that we want isn't always going to be in the price range that we all want yeah so you know so, something's like, prioritize got what you want mm. you know we're paying more next year but that's because it's got more of the things that we originally wanted and we're like, you know what? We've been inside for a whole year. We want a nice house that we're going to be able to like have people round and actually enjoy our time and not have to constantly look at mold or like cracks in the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. Just jazz it up a bit. Mm. I would I think that's probably what everyone's I'd thoroughly Sorry. recommend in like investing in your space though. Like don't just live in kind of the IKEA flat pack bedroom that you get given. You know, put some yeah. stuff on the walls, get a couple of plants. Yeah, I think that's probably the most important takeaway, especially from, you know, lockdowns and everything, is that your space is so important mm. to, like, not only looking nice, but for your, your mental health and your productivity. Being in a space that you that feels like home to you will make everything seem a little less bad. Yeah. There's probably a better way to say yeah, that. Yeah, like, well, like, bring a, but... for example, if you're just moving to uni, bring a couple of home comforts. You know, it might be like there's a specific, specific pillow that you have on your bed that you really like, or, you know, you've got a teddy bear, bring your teddy bear with you. Um, or, you know, maybe you enjoy painting and, like, you want to paint something to put on your wall. That's what I've done. I've got, like, a canvas on my wall that I've painted. Mm. It's just, you know, little things. Like, make the space yours because then you'll actually be happy when you're there and also it's kind of like um, a talking point yeah you know like i know that <laughs> we all um bonded over our stuffed animals because we all had them but we all kind of hid them in our rooms because it was yeah. like oh god we're all like 18 19 with like a teddy on our bed um but it ended up making us laugh i remember we were all sat in my room i think and we all had our teddy bears with them and we like introduced them to each other i don't think i was there for that to be fair i didn't i didn't bring it i didn't bring a teddy bear in first year i don't think i think i just had like a, maybe no it was i had it was my, i think it was my doorstop oh yeah my wall but anyway doorstop. we all brought them into my in my bedroom and we like <laughs> introduced them to each other which sounds silly you know, like a bunch of 18 year olds being like this is my toy <laughs> it was like show but and tell it was really adults. nice yeah yeah and it was like a nice way to kind of get to know each other yeah like at the end of the day you know you're gonna get along with people who are like you so if you just act like yourself then you'll find people who you know that you click with yeah and we've come full circle how lovely okay do we have anything else we want to i think i'm all you accommodationed to? out no final message i think my final message would probably be something along the lines of read your contract um ask for yes. help and if you've got any questions there's always like a housing officer at your university just ask them no question is too stupid okay yeah that would be my main thing there we go always ask before you act on something yeah because there is someone out there that knows a little bit more than you do <laughs> there's always someone who knows more and that is the takeaway for today <laughs> <laughs> great well i hope you enjoyed um our episode of the student rumble on accommodation yes. and i hope you tune in for the next one yeah thanks for listening bye Bye.